Welcome to Bar Chart, series of educational webinars. In this webinar on swing trading, I'll be discussing the key strategies and techniques that professional traders use to make consistent gains in the stock market. I'll be focusing on multiple time frame analysis, risk management, trend identification, and the probability of price range movement. These are all critical elements of a successful swing trading strategy. By the end of the session, you'll have a solid understanding of how to use them to your advantage. Hello, everyone. My name is John Rowland, Bar Charts Head of Trading Education, and my focus today will be on helping you to develop the skills of the swing trading methodology. So set back, get ready, and to learn the ins and outs of swing trading. Now, just a little business here that today's session is for educational purposes only and the decisions to buy, sell, hold, or trade securities or commodities or any other investment involves risk and best made on the advice of a qualified financial professional. And under no circumstances shall we be liable for any loss or damages you or anyone else occurs as a result of any trading or investment activity that you or anyone else engages in based on information or material that you receive through barchart.com and or our services. Now, before we get started, on a personal note, I use this usually about the time in the webinars where I introduce my partner, uh, Gene Baker. Well, Gene is under the weather today and won't be joining us. So I know that all of us will be wishing her a speedy recovery. So we miss you, Gene. Get well, and we'll see you in a week or so. Okay. So what is swing trading? Somewhere between long-term investing and day trading lies swing trading. Now, swing trading is a relatively short-term trading. Swing traders draw from both the aforementioned and very different types of disciplines of trading. And swing traders try to capture uh, small portions of a longer term trend following system and at the same time applied many of the same techniques that day traders use to discover trading opportunities and to manage the risk the art of swing trading has several steps but the process is quite simple we start at a macro time level or a higher time level and continue uh, to drill down the multiple time frames until we find a favorable trade entry and or exit that lives up to our trends and technical signals as well as the risk management rules used to define risk choosing targets discovering the risk reward ratios that are optimal to our trend conditions. The market selection, starting with market selection, which can be uh, multifaceted in terms of the many variables that we could influence us in our selection process, for instance, uh, market caps, large market cap stocks versus small market cap stocks, or determining the appropriate uh, volume liquidity. Does that market support a tight bid ask, which will allow me to uh, easily enter and exit without uh, a limited amount of slippage? But volume can also be used as a filter to confirm price actions in terms of you know, breakouts. Choosing, let's say, high volatility or high beta stocks uh, over low beta volatility. Now, the trade off here is how much risk we're willing to take on and the potential reward that justifies that risk. But because swing trading is much about trend following, it's often defined as momentum trading. So choosing, let's say, sectors who are leading or outperforming the broader market 
this is that start of that process of drilling down into those particular sector ETFs. And if we wanted to, um, really drilling down into the stocks that are within those chosen sectors. So how do we start that market selection process? Besides the fact of looking at uh, large cap stocks or, uh, you know, futures markets or ETFs or currencies or running to, into that particular. So one of the things that we can do is under our stocks page, here top tab, you can go to where it says stock market sectors. And this is where I can start doing that, that drill down top down analysis in terms of looking for a momentum stock. So let's look at, let's see which sectors have been outperformers uh, from three months ago. And we can see the top three are communication services, materials, and real estate. If we look at the ones that have been in the top ranking one month out, again, we see materials and real estate's a little bit on the lower end here, but again, technology, uh, excuse me, communication services, and consumer discretion. So if we look at uh, these again from you know, a one week perspective, consumer discretionary is real estate and communication services. So all any one of these sectors would be a great sector based on momentum to start doing our process. Now I have a watch list here of um, all the different S&P sectors, both uh, cap weighted and equal weighted. And it just happens that real estate, which is one of the ones that we just recognize is at the top of the list. So our process will be, you know, once we've discovered a sector, we're gonna start going into the sector or into the stocks and start doing some market analysis. And we'll come back to this, but I just wanted to show you what the chart looks like. And you could definitely see since October, uh, this sector has been what looks like uh, in an uptrend. Another way that we can look for momentum stocks or those stocks that are trending is in our investment tab, we can go underneath that and there is something called top performing stocks. And what this will do is will give us a more of a granular look at individual sectors based on the industries. So here again, here's that process where we're drilling down. We have a sector, and then we can go into that, that sector and what industries are reflective of that sector. So one of the sectors that was one of the outperformers over the last, say, three months or so was materials. And, you know, we look at steel producers. If I click on steel producers, what it's going to give me is now allows me to go down to that next level is I've gone from materials, now I'm at steel producers, now I'm seeing the top three performers in the steel producers uh, sector, right? And again, we're going to look at Nucor in our process, but again, if I did this from a six month perspective, again, you can see that this definitely looks like a stock that has been in an uptrend. All right. So we're going to continue with the dr drilling down process with something called multiple time frame analysis. Now this is here is where we're going to look at where price has been and where we believe it could potentially go. Sometimes I refer to this as my field of probability. In other words, we're going to start identifying our trends in a multiple time frame analysis. Now I'm going to take a time out here. Multiple time frame analysis process can be applied to all markets throughout a magnitude of time frames. One is not any writer than another. Is that correct? I don't know. <laughs> it all depends on the trader, uh, the average length of the trade held, and again, risk appetite. But in general, Higher time frames correlate to greater risk, but more reliability when it comes to trend following. 
Smaller time frames translate to smaller risk amounts, but higher probabilities of whipsaws and stopouts, as well as smaller returns. But for today's demonstrations in our, the equities that we're going to look at, I'm going to use weekly as my high time frame, dailies as my trend time frame, and then 60 minutes you know, to identify entries and exits and help me with risk control. So the higher time frame, in this case weekly, is going to give me my playing field of probability. Where is price and where has can it go? The daily is going to be my trend piece. And this is the piece that I'm going to try to capture as a swing trader. Now, in those two time frames, we're going to look for swing highs and swing lows. And we're going to locate where price is. And this is going to help me decide or determine what type of trade I'm going to initiate. Am I patiently going to wait for a drawback or a pullback? Or will I be aggressive and jump on, let's say, a breakout trade? All right, so let's do this. Go back to our real estate ETF. And let me do this. I'm going to go to dashboard because I haven't done dashboard in a while. So it's really a demonstration. Okay, so here we are at the XLR which is the real estate ETF. And we discovered that this one has a lot of momentum. Now, what's our process? Well, we're going to start here on a weekly time frame. You can see it's a three-year data set of weekly prices. And what I want to do is now I'm going to just draw some lines here where I'm going to look for what is called our swing highs and swing lows. Now, if you don't understand what a swing high and swing low is, this is where price stops going up and starts going down, that would be a swing high, and where price stops going down and starts going up would be a swing low. Now, on this chart here, if we looked at this in a, in a very large picture, you know, you, someone could say that, you know, this is where price stopped going down, and excuse me, start going up, and started going down, and this is where it stopped going down and started going up, and that is true. But this would be looking from left to right, in our process, what we want to do is we want to look from right to left. In other words, we're going to start at current price and move uh, to the left. So I'm going to start at current price and I'm going to move to the left. And I'm going to look where did price stop going down and start going up. So I just pre-designed to draw a, a line here. Um, if you're not familiar with how to do that, it's under our tools. And I'm going to just put a line where price stops going down and starts going up as my swing low. Now, some of you might say, well, why do you draw your line there? Why would you draw it on, let's say, the lowest of the wicks of these, let's say, these last three candles? Well, um, there is a theory that I tend to is that I want to look at openings and closings. I think opening and closings are very significant in our trade process. So I put this line here on the closing price of that red weekly candle. Now, where would be our swing high? Well, again, you know, if I started from current price and went to the left, the obvious spot would be somewhere around here. Again, you know, I could uh, draw that line right about where that wick comes out of the body. But notice right here, we do see that price did fall. And then on a one week basis, we did see price rally up and then price fell dramatically. So this is where price uh, stopped going up and started going down. In other words, this is the last big leg in this market. So I think we can safely say that this area right here would be a swing high. So what now what we've done at the weekly time frame here is we've defined our playing field of probability. In other words, 
where is the momentum of the market? We can see it is moving higher. Where is current price? Well, it looks like it's right in the middle of these two uh, lines. So at this point, I, you know, I don't know what trade I'm going to look for, but my momentum is up. I'm looking for, going to look probably for a buying opportunity, and I could either do a breakout or a drawback entry. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down to that intermediate time frame, that trend time frame, and you can see there's our lines are still there, and I'm going to do the same analysis. I'm going to say to myself, okay, where do I see um, uh, swing high and swing lows. Again, where did price stop going down and, and stop going up? Now, you can do see on the bottom side here, this would be a relatively good spot to make that assessment. But again, look here, we have a big red candle where price was forced down and then price went up. Again, in terms of if we think about an uptrend, an uptrend is a series of what? higher highs and higher lows. And inside of this, this two leg wave here, there is multiple higher highs and higher lows. And certainly this was a bit of a higher high and a higher low. So I can add another line. So one of these little tips here is I can right click on an existing tool and I can clone it. And then I'm just gonna draw my line there. Now over on this side here, you notice that we do see our uh, weekly swing high and there is a bit of a gap here, which is a really good spot. I love this. I'm just gonna tighten that up a little bit. But then again, you know, we can think about other things in terms of technical analysis, you know, old support, uh, when price breaks through becomes new resistance. And we do see that we do have a support area right here. And then this is where price came down, tested it, and then accelerated away. So a lot of times swing highs and swing lows may not be actually where you see reversals in prices, but they also can be areas where price pauses and then accelerates away. So in this case, I think we could say that here is where price came down, paused at a previous level of support, and then broke down. So this would become a new level of resistance. So again, I'm just gonna right click clone and move my line to the bodies of those two candles. So now what we've done here in the sixth in the daily time frame is notice that we're where price is. Well, in terms of our two layers, our weekly and daily levers, we can see that price is a lot closer to resistance than it is uh, to support. So in this case now, as I'm trying to determine what type of trade I'm going to initiate, now I'm starting to lean towards, I want to look for some kind of a drawback. In other words, I'm gonna wait for price to get closer to support uh, to initiate a trade. Now I could take a breakout trade and a breakout trade would be somewhere, let's say above this level. But when we start doing some risk assessments in terms of my entry and my exit, you notice that in this case above, let's say 4065, you know, this first layer of resistance is only about 65 cents away. I don't think that is a good reward for a breakout trade. And we'll go deeper into this in a second. So the next process we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to a lower time frame. Again, our drilling down process. And what do we see? Again, we see that current price is closer to resistance than it is to support. Again, that thought process where I'm gonna to wanna to look for, let's say a dip in this trend uh, to engage my uptrend, which we can see here, and um, maybe give me a little bit more 
reward. So the first spot that I kind of see here in terms of a potential area of support would be uh, right here, these two candles here. Now, why do I like these two candles? Well, you know, in candlestick theory, this is an engulfing candle that is a reversal pattern, but also look at what time, look at down on below, look at what time these two candles were created. Remember, I'm at a 60 minute time frame. This is at one is at uh, 3 p.m., which is the last hour of trading in the stock market. And the next one is at 9 p.m. So it's the first hour of trading. And what did I say? There's significance uh, to areas of support and resistance when we look at openings and closes. So could that be an area where I might look for an opportunity to buy a dip in this trend? Yes, certainly. So we do have uh, some tools that are available to us that helps us with this process. And let's see what I want to do. I want to come over here, excuse me. And here it is over here. And we do have a tool, it's called a risk reward tool. And so what I'll do is I'll come in here and say, let's say I want to look for an opportunity to buy. Um, well, actually, you know, let's stop for a second here. When you are drawing these lines, and I know that what I've kind of gone through with folks here is, you know, I'm showing a lot of my experience in looking for zones based on candlesticks or based on time of days. And maybe what uh, some of you might have concerns or you don't feel like you have the confidence in defining where you can find support or resistance or looking for those opportunities where we can look to buy dips or look for uh, these resistance zones or breakout zones. So there is a tool that we have on bar chart and we can find it under the studies. You go down here and it's called pivots, sometimes referred to as floor pivots. And these are designed based on previous price action. So if I open this up, we do have two settings. One is for pre based on the previous day setting, but we also have one that is based on the previous week's settings. So what I can do is if I'm not confident in these areas of supply or resistance um, uh, in terms of support and resistance or supply and demand, I can just use these as kind of giving me a guidance and also giving me confidence in my selection process. Now I did the weeklies first, and what I do notice that for today is that our resistance, that first resistance that we drew based on our daily is one of our resistance levels on our pivots. And notice that our third resistance here is also lines up with that candle that we drew on the weekly. So this gives me more confidence that the lines that I drew are in line with market price action. Now on the downside here, I just see the first support is a little bit in front of the line that we drew based on our, I believe our daily and then our third support is definitely in the same neighborhood of our weekly lower end. So I can come back in here and I felt good about those lines that I draw and I'm gonna click on pivots again. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change it to daily. And the reason why I'm gonna do this is when I go down to my next time frame, my lower time frame to look for those zones that I wanna take for a trade, I want to see if those zones or those levels will line up with the support and resistance levels that are on the pivot. Now, again, this is where I kind of jumped ahead. Notice that we do see a support level today that is right in those two candles, which I was about to do that process. But we could look for, you know, a support level that is a little bit lower 
right? In other words, we let price fall back a little bit, uh, re-engage our uptrend, and this might be a better trade because potentially um, it might give us a better reward. So at this point now, I can start to do that technical analysis in terms of risk reward. So I'll come back to our risk reward tool and let's do this support and see what happens. So I'm going to my entry price, I'm going to left click right where my entry price is, in this case, the support line. Where am I going to set my risk? Well, I, I really want to set my risk in my trend time frame, my daily time frame. But because of these two candles are created at the close and the opening, we could say as long as price stays above here, as long as this trend is intact, I feel confident that this trend is working. And then where I'm going to set my resistance. Well, I like to find these resistance or levels where we see the confluence of both our daily pivots and structure that I've already done in my chart analysis. And that would be here. Now, typically what I do is I do set a target in terms of um, setting up trades just a little bit in front. I just want to be make sure that I get out before we get to those levels. And what I see here is my risk here is 23 cents. My potential reward is $1.15. And the risk reward ratio is five to one. We're going to take a look at this in a second. Is this a good swing trade? Certainly right now uh, uh, at this aspect, it certainly does look well. But if I wanted to, let's say, be a little bit greedy and let's say set our target up here where we said we found resistance based on structure and our weekly time frame so let me go back and change this target to 4320. Here we can see, let me go back here and just open this up. Same risk, but a greater reward, certainly a better trade. So in this case, we'll have to make that a decision. Is this a realistic trade in terms of swing trading? We'll break this down in a second. All right, so let's do this. And that's going to take us to the next step of our process, determining if these risk rewards that I just showed you make sense in terms of defining a swing trade. So the first thing we'll, we'll do is we're going to set our stop loss in our trend time frame. Again, I want to do this. Why? Because this is the piece of price action that I'm trying to capture. So I want to be able to uh, take on the risk of the trend to get the reward of the trend. Now, what I might do is I might go to a lower time frame to help reduce that risk. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably lower my entry on a buy or raise my entry on a sell order, and I'm not going to change where I'm going to put my stop. Many times what I see uh, a lot of traders do is that it will raise their stop. Again, this give and take of risk reward, when I go to a lower time frame, if I raise my stop higher from a buy order or lower it from a sell order, that brings it closer to current price and that increases the probability that I'm going to get stopped out. So again, if I'm looking for a swing trade, I probably want to set my risk based on my trend time frame, and not in the lower time frame. But certainly I could use a lower time frame to help reduce my risk. Now, our rule of thumb in terms of how we can go from, let's say, our trend time frame to our lower time frame, the rule of thumb is something called a four factor. In other words, we want to drop down a time frame that's about four times 
less than our trend time frame. So if you think about in the terms of weekly, dailies, and six hour or 60 minutes, you know, if we think about the stock market, uh, you know, we have five trading days in a week, right? Weekly to daily. And then from daily down to, let's say, 60 minutes, well, there's only about six and a half hours of active trading in the stock market. So, you know, that is uh, a good factor for us. Now, could I use a higher factor? Yeah, I could. Uh, if I'm using, let's say, a time factor where my higher time fra frame is daily, well, maybe I might go down to a two or four hour is my trend time frame. And then from there, I could drop down by a four factor of, let's say, one hour or 30 minutes or from an hourly time frame to 15 minutes in terms of that four factor. So just keep that in mind when you're doing your uh, drilling down process. The other part of our risk reward and determining that ratio is I want to choose a realistic target that's going to give me uh, a good reward. Now, uh, day traders, you know, they're going to set up trades one to one or two to one. We're not in that game for, uh, right? We're trying to catch a little bit bigger piece of a, an intermediate time frame. So I think a very conservative rule for us here in terms of daily guidance is I want to look for targets that are going to give me a risk reward ratio of three to one or greater now in a trend following system if i set a lot of trades at three to one or greater well what happens is i only have to be right four out of ten times or in other words i only have to be right 40 percent of the time and i still can be a profitable trader and this is why we want to set higher minimum risk reward ratios so how are we going to set this up in terms of our swing trades as we look for individual markets? We're going to take that conservative guideline and we're going to set a target that is about one and a half to two and a half times something called our ATR. In other words, our average true range. And we're going to set our risk at somewhere around a half of an ATR. And this will guarantee that I will get those three to one or greater risk reward relationships. Okay. So let's go back to our dashboard. And let's do this. So how do I could determine that risk reward ratio in terms of my ATR, my average true range. Well, under um, in dashboard or on any of our individual stock pages, you will find something called more data. Sometimes you'll see it uh, up here on this header. So I'll go into more data and I'm gonna look under the technical analysis page. Again, on an individual stock, if you look on this left-hand side, you will see a lot of tabs one of them will say technical analysis. And you can see here it says uh, the 20 day average true range for this ETF is 0.78 or 78 cents. Again, if I open this up, there it is on that left header technical analysis. And we do give you a few different average true ranges over different time frames 20 days, 14 days and nine days in the lower range of average two ranges. So, you know, the question I usually get here is like, well, which one do I use, right? Do I use the nine day? Do I use the 14? Do I use the 20? Now, a lot of the technical analysis that we use, the defaults use 14s and 20 days. So you could use one of those two. But the way I would kind of look at this is, look at all three together and then see what is going on with this average true range. Now, if we notice there that the 20 is larger than the nine, what is that telling us? Well, average true range is a measurement of volatility and it's telling us that volatility is coming out of this market. In other words, the ranges are getting smaller. So on a conservative basis, again, in terms of my risk reward ratios, I'm probably gonna choose the lesser of these threes, in this case, 73 cents. Now remember in that slide I just showed you, 
we want to set up a trade where we can get into our trend where we only want to risk half of our average true range. In this case, we want to risk about 35 cents. And we're going to set targets, again, somewhere before in front of areas of resistance or supply zones uh, that we're going to get a well, one and a half to two and a half times our ATR. In this case, somewhere between, let's say, one dollar to maybe about two dollars or so. Okay, so let's go back to our dashboard and let's go back to this trade again. Here's that uh, trade. Well, we said we we're going to risk twenty-three cents. Does that work for us? Right. That is less than half of our ATR. And we set a target here of around uh, a reward of $3.18 up here around, uh, I believe the target was around 41, excuse me, this was the target we set based on that higher time frame at 43.20 where we got a risk reward ratio of 13 to one. Now, Let's look at this in terms of our ATR. We're risking 23 cents to make $3.18. In terms of a swing trade, is this a realistic trade? Well, yeah, I think we could anticipate that this real estate sector ETF could get $3 worth of profit you know, over a certain period of time, but how long would it take us to get $3? We know that we want to try to set our target on an ATR ratio that is probably closer to $1 or $2. Again, if I go to my technical analysis page right here, notice that over the last five days, this ETF has only moved about 68 cents. And over the last 20 days, it did move about $3. So what is this kind of telling us, right? We said that the volatility is coming out of it. so in terms of trying to get that higher reward or in getting that greater risk reward ratio, I'm gonna to have to hold on to this trade for it looks like almost a month. That might not be a time frame that you feel comfortable with. Many swing traders like to open trades in the beginning of the week and close them out by Friday so they don't have that weekend risk. So that target is too far away. So we need to find a target that's a little bit closer. And certainly this target here, where we've set up the trade in front of that second resistance around 41.20, uh, let's reopen our, let's reset this. And then set up our, target somewhere it's just in front of us put it around 41.15 now i'm risking 25 cents well inside of that half of my atr my target right is a dollar nine away right and my risk reward ratio here is 4.36 this is a more realistic swing trade and it lines up better with the price probability of this particular uh, ETF. All right, so let's do this. Let's go to Nucor and do the same process. So let me clear the board here. And let me go to a candlestick chart and let's get rid of volume for now. And we're going to start at our weekly time frame. Okay. So let's see what we see, right? What do we see? Well, we see, again, starting at current price, I'm going to go down into the left and I'm going to look for the where did price stop going down and start going up. Right there. 
And where did price stop going up and start going down? Well, obviously way up here. But I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go inside this wick at a lower time frame, probably our daily or even our 60 minute time frame to maybe bring this line down a bit. So let's do that. There's our weekly line. Now, in terms of where did price go up and then go down and then go back up again, another a swing pivot in our trend time frame. Again, you know, I think we could easily say that would be a spot. Now let's go back over here to the left. There's that big giant wick we saw in the weekly. And here is a big red candle where price stopped going up and start going down. And so where are we in our playing field of price? Again, it's similar to what we saw with the real estate ETF. We are in the higher end of the range, right? And so in this case, could I look for a breakout trade? Yeah, I surely could. But my breakout here, again, you know, my target is probably only $6 away. So if I could find a trade where I'm only risking maybe $2, that might be a, a good breakout trade. But I think the better trade here would be what? Looking for one of those drawbacks, looking for a price back where price found support and then shot away. So in candlestick theory and also in charting theory, gaps in candlestick theory, they're called open windows, but gaps tend to be good support levels. So I'm thinking that somewhere in this area, I'm going to find a better entry in terms of uh, this poten potential target reward. So again, if I'm not confident in my charting capabilities or looking for levels of support and resistance, what can I do? I can come into our studies, pull up my pivots and add them to my chart. And notice what happens for this particular trade. Here we do see the second level of support and the third level of support is right in line with the charting, right? That right above that gap. That would be probably the better uh, scenario. Now there is a little area here that we could probably drill down to and see if that would be a good trade. But again, we're gonna do that with our uh, ATR assessment. So how do we do that? Well, we can go back to our more data and look under our technicals. We can see that our ATR for Nucor is $5.46. And so now that is the 20 day. But if I open this up and look at all of them, notice that we see the opposite of what we saw with the real estate trust. Here we see that the nine day is greater than the 20 days. So again, what is this market telling us? It's telling us that there's more volatility coming into the market. So again, if on a conservative basis, I'm probably gonna take the smaller of these threes. So in this case, $5.46, I don't wanna risk more than let's say $2.75. And in terms of setting targets, well, I can be a little bit more aggressive here because volatility is a little bit stronger. I can start looking for you know, a target that is maybe $10 away or maybe even closer to $12 away um, in terms of our trade. So let's go back to our trade. Um, did I lose you, Nucor? Oh, there you are. Go back to my dashboard, there it is. All right, so where are we at? Well, this we can do this trade in reverse. Here is that area of resistance, 176, right? And here is our level of support, 161, right? Is that gonna give me a greater risk reward? Yeah, it's definitely gonna give me a greater risk reward. 
So let's drill down and see what happens when I drill down. Okay. Could I take a breakout trade here? Yeah, I could, but I'm probably going to have to get in at a very small amount of risk in order to capture this last $5. What we said we want to do is try to capture about $10, right? Or maybe even get a little bit more. So let's look at this trade here. So I'm gonna get rid of this circle here. Excuse me, let me do my support resistance, excuse me, my risk reward. My entry is gonna be around 61.97. I'm gonna set my stop just below, right? And on a daily time frame, that was that daily gap. Here I'm risking, it looks like about a little bit about two dollars and sixty cents and i'm going to set that target just in front of that confluence of risk reward so here i'm risking two dollars and sixty two cents and setting a reward of five dollars excuse me of fourteen dollars does this work as a swing trade in terms of risk reward yes it does does it work in terms of um the data that we're deriving from our price probabilities based on our ATRs and the structures that we're seeing on our chart certainly does, right? So this would be a really nice trade if we get it. Now, is price gonna come back and fill that spot or come and give us that entry? You know, only time will tell. Now, what options traders could do here is at this point say, you know what, this is where I want to enter the market. This is where I feel comfortable being long. Well, we could do some option trades where let's say sell some puts, right? In other words, um, look to gather some premium. If price moves away, then those puts would, would uh, expire worthless. And that would be a way for an options trader. Or I wait for price to come back into the zone and do some type of vertical spread in terms of a call, bull call spread, all right? All right, so I do see a couple of questions here. I wanna answer some of them, and then I wanna go through one more uh, demonstration of a different market, okay. The Lobster Thermidor, I love these names, <laughs> is asking me, how does a daily weekly pivots compare to Fibonacci levels on daily and weekly charts well that's a great question I, I i don't have that answer but there's an easy way uh you know we can define that right we can just go back to our tools excuse me go over here to our tools and look at let's go to a weekly time frame and oops draw that again So here's Fibonacci retracements. I'm gonna click on that one and we could do something like this, right? Let's do this, let's get rid of our pivots right now. And so we can see where our Fibonacci retracements are. You know, you can see they're kind of lining up with some of those entry levels that we already pre-discovered. So, you know, it's just another technique you can use you know, pivots are based on previous price actions as well as Fibonacci's. Fibonacci's are more about of these mathematical numbers or these golden rules. Okay. So Wayne asks, can we use the trader's cheat sheet for the pivot points um, and different time frames utilized on this sheet? So I I believe I wish I had Gene here for with me today, but I believe that the traders Cheat sheet only shows Wayne the daily pivots. It doesn't show the weekly ones, although I think you can make some adjustments on that one. Um, and so what Wayne is talking about over here is our daily traders cheat sheets. And yes, I think the pivot points are based on the daily pivot points. Okay, Wayne, so um, no, I don't believe we can do uh, change those and I could be uh, wrong. So Wayne, do me a favor, send that question to support and they'll let you know if you can change these pivot points based on the time of day, excuse me, the time frame scale. So 
So Connor asks, what's important for candles to close before initiating position or is it time fine to set orders, see how the candle closes, deciding on what is to do with your prop position? So Connor, I, again, it depends on each trader, but I definitely think that um, if you're using candlestick formations or you're looking at breakout type trades, yeah, I would rather see the candle close before I make that initiate, initiation trade. In other words, you know, I want to make sure I can confirm the price action with the candle, right? Because those are many times, um, um, you get those false breakouts. All right, I just got a, my support team just sent me a note saying that Wayne, yeah, you can only um, show on the cheat sheet, the daily, daily cheat sheet as uh, daily data, okay? Um, Manera asked me, sometimes stocks move a full ATR, so how do you set a target? Uh, could you take a long to get a trade? So I think what I'm saying here for you is, is it's what we're using the ATR for is more about a probability of price movement. In other words, yes, could, market move one ATR on any given day. That's really what ATR is telling us. What I'm saying to you is I want to set a realistic target that is going to be a multiple of ATRs. Now that doesn't mean that every day the market moves one ATR in one direction. It's a range of price. So in the example before where I was like, hey, we wanted to try to capture that $13 of profit, I think it was on the new core trade, uh, excuse me, on the um, ETF trade, that wouldn't be realistic for us, right? Because that would be how many multiples of our ATR? Well, the ATR was only 70 cents. That would be, you know, a multiple of almost, you know, 15 ATRs or 20 ATRs. And again, that doesn't even mean that we're gonna get there in 20 days. So it's not a realistic trade if you are trying to find a shorter period of time. Again, trying to capture that small piece of our moving average. So Fred, excellent. I love when the students ask me questions um, about using technical analysis. So, yeah, so that's what I wanted to go back on this new core trade in terms of our dashboard. So let me change this here. So what Fred is asking is, can we use other technical analysis to help us with our decision-making um, process? And yeah, Fred, that is definitely one thing that I wanna do. So let's get rid of these Fibonacci's. And again, you know, here we are our weekly time frame. Why do I want to look for drawbacks instead of looking for breakouts? Well, I could use some very simple technical analysis, MACDs and RSIs. And where do, do we what do we see? You know, we're in the RSI, uh, we're in the oversold, excuse me, the overbought. Uh, we have a very elevated MACD. Yes, we have good momentum, but again, you know, we're probably too high in the range of our field of probability. That's why we want to wait for a little bit of a correction. Um, excuse me, this is at the daily level, right? So if I'm looking at a lower time frame, right, Fred? So what I might wait for is looking for those opportunities that I'm going to draw and look for the opposite, right? Maybe look for a little bit of an oversold condition uh, in our RSIs or get that MACD crossover after price has already retreated, give me that confirmation. Uh, so yeah, great question in terms of using other technical analysis to line up with the zones or the entries that you wanna take, all right? So let's do this because I'm getting a little bit top of the hour and I wanna get you guys out of here before uh, the Fed speaks. I know I wanna watch what he has to say today. So let's go to gold because everybody loves gold. So I'm going to kind of go through this a little bit on the quick side. So let me just change my template to just a chart. And started our weekly. Okay. 
So gold, gold's been on a rip, right, recently, right? And, you know, again, if I start at current price and I go to the left, where's our swing high? Well, I mean, very obviously for us. Where's our swing low? Well, we can say from all the way back here. But again, what did I say to you? Sometimes you can find swing highs and swing lows, not necessarily where price reverse, but also where price pauses. And you can see on this weekly chart, this is the only down weekly candle that we have. So I think this is fair to assess to us. This is an area of a swing low. Again, where are we in this playing field probability? We're at the high end. So what is that telling, what is that telling me as I start to drill down? Am I gonna be looking for breakout trades? Probably not. I'm gonna probably look for some type of a pullback trade. Well, if I was going to guess at the weekly time frame. I would definitely want to be down, you know, in the lower, in the middle to the lower half of uh, that range. That could be down here or that could be, you know, down by this uh, wick of this last weekly candle. All right. So if I don't know what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my studies. Right? If I don't have confidence, again, I'm going to go to my weekly, Let's look at my areas. Right, and there we see there's our three levels of support one, two, three. So let's do this, let's just draw a secondary line on this second level of support that is in between uh, our second level of support that's just below that um, uh, last weekly candle. Now, those are uh, resistance levels or our target areas, they're, they're all kind of lining up. Um, in the same level, right? So I'm going to get rid of my weeklies. I'm going to go to my dailies now. Now I'm going to drop down to my daily time frame. Notice what we see here. Our second level of support on our weekly time frame is right around where we have our third level of support on the daily and our second level of support. Again, right? Let's look at this trade in terms of the risk of this trade. I'm looking for an area where price is going to pull back. Uh, how much risk am I going to take on this trade? And, you know, if I'm going to set up a target, let's say, you know, this most recent high or even this target high, is that going to give me enough risk reward in, in order to take this trade? So, again, if I go into my data and I look at my technical, you can see our average true range is $24.70. So what does that tell us? Well, I want to try to take a risk of around $12 or less, but I can be a little bit aggressive in terms of setting my targets because this is definitely a very volatile type of market in terms of gold. Where I could set a target of maybe like $50. So let's look at this trade. Looking at an entry down around here, where I'm going to re-engage my uptrend, and then I'm going to set my stop, let's say just below these candles here. And then where's my target going to be? Well, we said we'd like to set up just in front of an area of resistance. So let's use this second level of resistance. And so what am I doing? Well, I'm risking about Seventeen hundred dollars, or uh, you know, about well, probably a little bit more risk than I would want to take on this trade. But that are certainly our risk reward ratio is right in that greater than three to one. So in terms of our ATR, in terms of our structure, in terms of our technical analysis, let's do that for Fred. Right. Why we want to look for a pullback? Well, we're getting that negative divergence, right? In our RSIs, we've got a little bit of MACD momentum turnover at the daily time frame. So yeah, Fred, I think what we want to do is look for that entry that's a little bit lower, let our RSI fall down into the, say, this 50-40 range, let the MACD pull back and level out and give us that trade. Okay. I'm at the end of my time for today. Let's do this. And I'm going to get rid of some of these, I think. 
Yeah, I got a lot of these up here. Hang on with me, folks. Okay, so what are some of our takeaways? Remember, swing trading is a strategy that attempt, uh, tries to attempt to capture a small portion of a trend, right? We don't want to get greedy. We don't want to get piggy, 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 right? That might be too long of a time frame for us to get that uh, result. Again, we just want to try to capture a small piece of momentum. Finding the right markets that fit your risk tolerance, right? So how do I do that? Well, again, if I'm setting up my trades in my risk assessment in my trend time frame, that will help me determine if that is a risk tolerance that I can afford. If that market has too much risk, in the case like let's say gold, that I'm willing to take on, then that is not the right market for me. Know your playing field of probability. Where is price in that weekly range? Where is price in your higher time frame range? If price is at the upper end of your range, you want to be a little patient, look for those pullbacks. But if price is at the lower end of your range and you're looking for a buying opportunity, then breakout trades might be the better of the two scenarios. Identifying your trend, right? Your trend is your friend. What is that piece that we're going to try to capture? Right? How do I determine the type of entry? Again, if I added these three elements together, know where I'm in the probability of my playing field, I know what my trend is, then that's going to help me determine the type of entry. And setting that risk, like I said, in our trend time frame, you know if these are the right markets for me, but also it will give me a greater probability of not getting stopped out. Now that might mean I might have to take on a little bit more risk, but I'm willing to take on more risk because now I'm in a trend time frame, And so that's why it's important for you, those swing traders to understand is, you know, yes, we can look for entries at lower time frames, but we still want to try to set our risk based on our trend time frame. And finally, using those lower time frames to help reduce your risk. Being a little bit more patient, looking for a price to move a little bit deeper into our range or our field of probability. Setting those realistic targets. How do we determine that? Well, we have that tool, right? We have our pivots and we have our ATRs. In other words, we're using the probability of price action previous price action to help us set realistic targets that are inside of the time frame of the trend that I'm trying to capture. In other words, if I'm a swing trader and I only want to hold positions three to five days, I don't want to set a target where it could take 20 days for me to get that trade. Now, it doesn't mean I have to get out when price reaches my lower time frame target but it definitely, definitely means I'm going to need to do some kind of risk uh, adjustments in terms of maybe locking in profits, moving my stops to profitability, uh, and then letting trade run if that's what my trade plan is. Okay. Um, so let's do this. There we go. There we go. Whoop, whoop. All right. So next week, um, I just want to come talk to you guys what we're going to do next week. And this is really cool. Next week, we're going to have a special guest. And this is going to be a little bit different from the webinars that we normally do, our educational type webinars. Uh, we're going to have uh, Jerry Parker, who's the CEO of Chesapeake Capital, who's also one of the original turtles, if you under know what the turtles are. And get Jerry's going to come on, and he's going to talk about his philosophy, his methodology, but more importantly, he's going to demonstrate to us how he uses bar chart to help him with his process and what tools he uses in bar chart to make him a more successful trader. So I can't tell you how excited I am about this uh, webinar. I think this is going to be a very uh, exceptional 
uh, webinar. So make sure you sign up for that one and um, get a chance to come and see that. Uh, I will also remind all my premier members that on Fridays we have our premier show uh, market on the close. So make sure that you stop in and check that out. Again, uh, these are recorded so you can watch them at a later time. You can go under here where it says Bar Chart Live um, and you can watch them on our YouTube channel. And, and all of the webinars that for today, including today's, are on our YouTube channel, so you can watch these. Uh, the slides that I presented today will be found uh, in later today when they upload it. You will find them in the archives. Here we are unlocking successful short-term trading. And there's where you can find the slides. Okay. And so until next time, folks, be safe out there. The best of health and the good of all trading.